You are listening to a sermon from Village Baptist Church in Petaluma. For more sermons like this one, please visit our website at villagebaptisthome.org. Our mission is to win people to Christ and develop them into active disciples. We pray this sermon is a blessing to you. Now let's hear today's message. Listen to this. The point of the message today is to ask you the question, what is your responsibility in evangelism? What is your responsibility in evangelism? Let me read this and then we'll continue to have fun. When I was in my final year in college in British Columbia, Canada, in Vancouver, I heard this story. Some of you that are on my Facebook page, you've read it. But let me share it with you. Please follow me as closely as you can. This is the story. About four people, their names were everybody, somebody, anybody, and nobody. There was an important job to be done and everybody was sure that somebody would do it. Anybody could have done it, but nobody did it. Somebody got angry about that because it was everybody's job. Everybody thought anybody could do it, but nobody realized that everybody wouldn't do it. It ended up that everybody blamed somebody when nobody did what anybody could have done. That is the story of evangelism. What Jesus said is, go ye into what? All the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you. Amen. Amen. I want Denise. Tell me what you notice about how many cups are on this table here? Seven. Okay. Seven. What you notice about them? Okay, what else? Oh, really? I don't know how that happened. Okay. It's the power of the Holy Spirit saying something. <laughs> okay, yeah, tell me more. Anything else you can notice, you notice about them? Some are the same level. And some are not. not. Okay. But you are very sure, though, that they are, don't don't get too close to them. That one's the most full. It's the most full. Okay. Okay. Um, What do you think is in them? Water, okay, some sparkling water, and some not sparkling water, okay. Uh, what else? Yeah. 
You're not sure? I'm not sure what else. Okay, let's give her a hand for her observations. Okay, go ahead and take your gift. <laughs> Okay, what will you all think if I tell you that she was wrong? Uh, Rosalind, come up here, please. I want you to smell them and tell us if they're the same things. For a reason. Uh, I see that. This one in the middle, you haven't? No, I'm just okay. Right here. Okay. Yeah. Are they all the same? No. Okay. <laughs> uh, give her a hand. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, do I have a chalkboard here? No, it's all taken. All right. Uh, no, that's fine. Let's. Let's just deal with it. What do you think was different? They're different flavors. I can tell you what some of the flavors are. Okay, they're different flavors. Okay. But they're not all water, right? You can tell right away, right away. that they're not all water, right? What do you think one, at least one was? One Sprite. One sp sp 7-Up Sprite. Okay. Okay, what else? Two, two of them smell like water. Okay. But the other ones were also. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. Is she wrong? Yes. He helped me in putting them in. Okay. What, what, what was wrong about what? Oh, okay. You couldn't smell. Really? There was vodka in there. Okay. Yeah. Which one? Only two, only one cup contain clear water. Only one cup in here qualifies as water. Okay. Let me tell you something. I'm going to make two points that is very important to evangelism and our responsibility to share the gospel. Don't ever assume as you go out that everybody is the same. Uh, when I was in seminary, one of the professors taught me that assuming is a bad thing. And if you divide the word, you will get the result that tells you if you assume. Amen? Aliyah looking at me and say, what, can you explain? No. <laughs> I'll let your mom explain to you. <laughs> So the first thing is this, that when God sends us into the world to do evangelism, we should never assume that people are the same. They may look the same. They may even smell the same. But they're not the same. The second thing is this. Don't ever assume that all religions are the same. Amen. Have you ever had somebody tell you all black people look alike? Yes. What will you say about somebody who makes such a statement? Number one, they ain't black. Okay? If you're black, you know you don't look like every black person. <laughs> Number two, anyone that makes such a statement does not have a black friend. 
I don't mean just people you met here and there, but people that you really know. The same can apply to someone who says all white people are the same. It's a nonsensical statement. Doesn't make any sense. Because when God created you, it took time to create you. Isn't it amazing? Even identical twins, God doesn't use the same thing to create them. So when you deal with somebody, it is really important to understand that the reason why the message of Jesus is important and unique is because all religions are not the same. And if you believe in Jesus, you know you have a special message. We may look alike. We may say we serve the same God, but when you look beneath, we don't serve the same God. The God of the Christian science is not the same God that I worship. The God of Jehovah Witnesses is not the same God that I worship. We have to be very careful and we have to be distinct when we're talking about sharing the gospel. Since we're looking at this, what then is important if you are going to share the gospel? You, yes, go ahead, go ahead. Thank you. We need to know the gospel. What do you want me to bring to you? Pick, pick somebody to give it to This one? Okay. The Holy Spirit was leading us at the same time. <laughs> so, we need, if God has called you, we, you need to be in this biblical seminary of evangelism. We had two people last week that accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Aliyah, stand. Anaya, stand. Amen. They, they accepted Christ, and uh, the uh, membership team is still going to be talking to you, but I want to talk to the parents. You're going to be the most important person in their lives to bring them to where God wants them to be. Okay? What is, what they did was that they were born last week. And the process of Christian growth that Jesus gave us in Matthew chapter 28, 19 through 20, is that we should make them disciples. When you bring a baby from the hospital, you don't say, here's rice. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Right? Am I, am, am I not telling the truth? Amen. You don't bring a baby. You don't have a baby at the hospital and then just drop them by the roadside. Go fetch it yourself. That's literally what just happened to them. They, just, they were born into the Christian family. Now it is important that they come into a Christian home where they can be taken care of. And very soon, 
they're going to start speaking the, the uh, language of Christianity. It does not happen by the process of osmosis and it does not happen by magic. Great responsibilities for both of you. Um, let's have prayer for the two right now. Our Father, we just want to thank you for uh, Aliyah and for and I for accepting Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Even though they're young, you have said, let the little ones come to me. For for such is the kingdom of heaven. We commit them into your hands in the mighty name of Jesus. And we pray right now that anything that is going to come their way, that you will be their stronghold and that you will be their protector and that you will be their defender, defend them from the world, defend them from uh, bad company in the name of Jesus. And we pray for uh, Tamara that you will give her wisdom, continue to help her to raise her up in the way that she should go. And we pray for a grandmother that has taken the responsibility to lead Anaya to Christ and have that influence. We pray, Lord, that you will encourage her. You will strengthen her. Give her the power. Any evil that will come into their homes, may the power of the Holy Spirit defeat that evil. In Jesus' precious name, amen. 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 You may be seated. Yeah. So we, we take it very seriously. When a person becomes a Christian, we have to help them from infancy to adulthood. That's our responsibility. But today I'm preaching on the responsibility that we all have to share the gospel. So what is it that you need to be very sure of when you're going there to share the gospel? We're sending you out. Jesus is sending you out to go out and preach the gospel. What are the things that you need to prepare yourself for to have it on? Like you're going to fight the devil, you're going to put on the armor of God. When you're going out to preach, to teach, and to bring people to Christ, you have to be sure of a few things. Let me, let me mention them. Number one is what? Huh? Sword of the Spirit, number one is the deity of Christ. Yes. That's what makes salvation possible. Because we have a perfect sacrifice who is himself God. And it is because he is God that he can cause a breach between us and the Father. You cannot compromise that. Amen. Him who knew no sin became what for us? Sin. sin for us. The reason why your salvation is sure is because the one who died for you was God himself. Don't buy that Jesus was a good teacher thing. Yes, he was. But that was not all he was. Amen. Don't say he was just moral. He was a miracle worker. But then you're telling me he was a liar? He cannot be both. He cannot be a good teacher, a moral person, a miracle worker, and still be a liar to tell you he is what? Same with God. 
He said, I and the Father are one. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. You can't compromise that. Even when he was speaking with Jews, he didn't hide anything. He said, before Abraham was, I am. And that was the same Jesus that Thomas said, my Lord and my God. And he is oh, don't call me God. They worshipped him. He didn't say, don't worship me. Only God can be worshipped. So you have to be sure. You're not just following a teacher, a good teacher, a moral person, a miracle worker. You're following God. Theologically, John said, in the beginning was the word and the word which, and the word the same was in the beginning with God. All things were created by him. And there was nothing created that was made without him. Amen. Just in case you miss. And you don't know what he's talking about when he said the word. He said in verse 14, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the father. Full of grace and truth. You can't compromise that. Number two. That you cannot compromise if you're going to go there and you're going to represent Jesus and you're going to represent Christianity, you cannot compromise the original sin. Romans 3.10 says what? Amen. <laughs> oh, amen. I was waiting for somebody to tell us that. God created man and he looked at him and he said he was good. God gave him a free will. That's why he was good. He was not created in specs S, X. You see, when you are created in space X, there is a computer chip in you. You can be very, very active, but you can't do something that the creator does not want you to do. When God created you, he didn't put a chip in you. He made you so you can say yes and you can say no. Unfortunately, that's what got us here. Man got to the point where man did not want to listen to God and man felt, I am man. Have you ever heard somebody tell you that? I am a man. <laughs> or the way men say to their wives, I'm the head of the house. <laughs> if you're truly going to be a Christian, you can't say I'm the head of the house because Jesus is the head of the house. I'll call you to read that passage again and read it very carefully. Do a good exegesis of it. You're going to find out you can't even claim that. Amen. I give up claiming that anyway. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> Original sin does not mean that Adam and Eve are responsible for the condition you're in now because you're also responsible for the condition you're in. Amen. Read book of Romans. Amen. 
It's very clear. Not only do you have to be sure about the original sin, that we are all sinners, we're all sinners because we decided to go our own way. It doesn't matter who you see, whether they're homeless or they have a $50 million mansion. We're all on the same boat. There's nobody you meet in the world that is not a candidate for evangelism. Because all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So not only do we have to understand the, or, uh, the deity of Christ, the what? Original sin. Original sin. What else do we have to recognize? You said it last time. That was the first thing you mentioned. You forgot that quick? Okay. Not the armor of God. The canon of scripture. The canon, yes, that was the way you said it. The word of God. Amen. You should never go out and share your opinion. Jesus did not send you and go share your opinion. If I listen to a lot of people about opinion, we won't have a lot of members in this church. I remember some people tell me when we were in Marine City, why are all those young people coming in wearing that hat? We shouldn't allow. I said, what's the problem with it? Well, I said, well, what? they shouldn't come in here with a cap on. Or some people try to make me wear a three-piece suit. That was make you a preacher. (laughs) You can wear a nine-piece suit. If God didn't call you, you're still not a preacher. (laughs) It is important that we stay in the word. That when we share the gospel with people, we're sharing what Jesus says. And you don't have to be responsible for it. Let God be God. It's very important we understand that. Beside canon of scripture, what else? The trinity of God. Amen. That God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You need to be convinced of it yourself because you're going to meet a lot of people that have been brainwashed and misled and had very terrible teaching using something that's not the Bible that they call the Bible. I I give you permission to say, I already made up my mind. Because what what the Bible says, don't confuse me with your lies. It is only Christianity that teaches the triune God. The one that is not even easy to explain. I wonder why Christians will put themselves in that. Because like Martin Luther, I cannot recount because the Bible has already given me the facts that I need. Are you still with me? The Trinity is something you don't have to say you need to know the Trinity before you're born again. 
I'm saying when you begin to share the gospel, there are some things you cannot compromise on as a Christian. You cannot compromise on the deity of Christ. You cannot compromise on original sin. You cannot compromise on the canon of scripture. And you cannot compromise on the trinity of God. What else can you not compromise on? The resurrection of Jesus Christ. The resurrection of Jesus Christ. And I mentioned last week that, that Christianity is the only religion, the only faith that can speak of the resurrection. Amen? Buddha, he's dead and gone. Muhammad, dead and gone. You can, you can start naming them. They're gone, they're gone, they're gone, they're gone. Nobody can show you the grave of Jesus. Empty. Not only that, some people were there gazing up into the sky. And the angel said, oh, you, why are you standing up looking there? This same Jesus has gone. He's going to come back Amen. the same way. Amen. Now, the resurrection was not witnessed just by the women Amen. who went to the tomb. The men finally got courage also to go to the tomb and find out the grave was empty. Not only that, there were two that was walking on the road to Emmaus and they were talking with Jesus himself. They didn't know and Jesus made them know. Amen. But that's not it all. The Bible tells us that more than 500 people at the same time witnessed what? The resurrection. It's not something we made up. The resurrection is not made up. You cannot compromise on it. In fact, when you look at Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, is the resurrection in there? Lord, and believe in your heart that God did what? Raised him from the dead. You will be saved. That's why Jehovah's Witnesses are not saved. Because partial resurrection is not resurrection. Just rising up in the spirit, really? It's not possible. So what do we say? The deity of Christ you cannot compromise. Original sin you cannot compromise. The canon of scripture you cannot compromise. The trinity you cannot compromise. The resurrection you cannot compromise. What else can you not compromise? John 1.1. 1, 1. John 1.14. 1, the gospel of Mark. The gospel of Matthew. The gospel of John. The gospel of Luke. You cannot Overlook them. And if you do not overlook them, you must, be, you must be convinced that Jesus became man. He came into history and history became his story. When Jesus came into the world, the world got divided. B.C. and A.D. The world got divided. Believers and non-believers. The world got divided. Followers and antagonists. The world got divided. Those who profess him and those who deny him. Jesus came. 
into history. The ruler and the king of history. So we believe in the incarnation. What else do we believe? Because Jesus came that you cannot compromise. The new creation. Amen. If any man is in Christ, the Bible says he does what? He becomes a new creation. That's how we know you're saved. That's how I know I'm saved. I know before I became a Christian what no one can tell me. Jesus did not just redecorate me. Jesus did not just renovate my heart. He changed it completely. Amen. Amen. If you're redecorated and rearranged, that's why you're still having so much problem with some things. I am not denying that we are creation, creation of God and we are not perfect and we are sinful because if any man says that I have no sin, he makes God out to be a liar and the truth is not in him. But I tell you, if you don't care whether you sin or not, you're not made new. I, I, you know, just think of this. Think, think of it this way. How can I say I work for IBM? I'm not sick, but I keep calling in every day. I'm sick. How many of us obey God only when we want to? Oh, I'm a new creation in Christ. I've been born again. You cannot be born again and not be bothered by racism. And I'm not trying to get political here, but you cannot be a born again person and lie like a sailor. Well, I don't know how sailors lie, but that's the. <laughs> Are you getting it? I don't want to go deep into that. It's amazing. We are to be, in, oh, I, I have one more, I, I forgot. You're born again, but what the other one we cannot compromise? Eschatology. Eschatology. We cannot compromise the fact, you know what? If you compromise that, it means because you don't understand your faith at all. The, le the reason why I live the way I live is because I know I'm going to see Jesus one day. Amen. If he doesn't tarry, I'm going to see him before I die. And I won't die. But I will get a new body. Amen. 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 I, I just thank God. It's because of the, uh, of the gospel that I know that getting up in the morning and not being able to walk to the bathroom is just a temporary thing. Amen. <laughs> Amen. It's a temporary thing that I have to use glasses. It's a temporary thing. It's a temporary thing that I have to eat before I take my medicine. 
It's a temporary thing. It's a temporary thing that I'm going to get hungry if I don't eat and I'm going to die if I don't eat. But one day, I know without a doubt, all glasses will be gone. One day, I know without a doubt, I won't be taking no more medicines for anything. One day, I know I'm going to be with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and the Lamb is going to be there and the 12,000 thousand of elders will be there. I'm going to join them in the chorus. Hallelujah! 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 To the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We Therefore, my beloved brothers, I want to encourage you. When I was in the Boy, Boy Scouts, I got to the stage where I became an Eagle Scout in Nigeria. I was leading the whole area. And one of the things that a Boy Scout has to be is what? Be prepared. You have to be prepared. On my honor, I promise to do what? My best and do my duty to my country, Nigeria. And to be what? Faithful at all times. And to obey what? The scout laws. <laughs> Amen. I didn't know you'd... you. You guys know it started in America, right? Okay. But you have to be prepared. In fact, 1 Peter 3, 15 and 16 says that now that you have been called by God to go out there and to witness, you have to be what? Be prepared. Be ready in season and out of season. Be ready to preach the gospel. Be ready to share the gospel. And, and then one more thing, that you need to know that when you're working for God, be always steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For you know that in the Lord, your labor is not in vain. So we're equipped. We're equipped because in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 says, You are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, that you may do what? Declare. Declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. God has called you out of the world. God has called you out of darkness. He wants you to declare it. Some of us don't want to say it because we don't want people to criticize the way we're living in front of them. Amen. But we are ambassadors Amen. of Christ. First Corinthians, uh, Second Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 through 20. We are ambassadors for Christ. What does an ambassador do? You represent. You represent God. We are Christ's ambassadors. And it means we're going to represent him. Thank you for listening. If you would love to hear more sermons like this one or find out more about our church, please visit us at villagebaptisthome.org. Until next time, take care and God bless.